so first of all, uh, welcome online once again. And uh, for most of you, I've seen it's going to be some of you is going to be good morning, good afternoon, good night, good middle of the night, whatever it is. Uh, because this is a global thing, we have so many different times and um, yeah, I hope that uh, it kind of suits for you and if it doesn't then I'm sure later on um, you can watch the video whenever it's the right time in your country. Um, what we decided to do uh, for today is again take it on a little bit of an editorial edge when it comes to cutting hair because this is uh, for me, the important value of the brand that I'm connected to. You know, Kevin Murphy is an editorial based brand, and the cutting that relates to that is also um, very much editorial inspired. So, for that reason, um, the hair cutting is, is based on a good technical foundation where I always love to share a technique to make sure that we do have a system of how we can cut hair, rely on that system to be able to copy that haircut when people are happy with it, but also to make sure that from an educational point of view, we can actually make sure we pass it on to other people by using that technical foundation uh, behind the haircut. Now today we have the wonderful Elena here. Um, Elena is a good friend of mine and a good friend of the whole family actually. And Elena, what I like about her is that she's a real tomboy. Um, so the whole concept for today is working on a bob haircut or anything that relates to that bob, which is, um, you know, cage boys or bowl cuts or uh, rounded bobs, graduated bobs, layered bobs, you know. It's not just the one, um, the one length haircut that Cleopatra was famous for, you know. It has a lot more variations and a lot of people, I think, know my passion for short hair, so I decided for today to give you a haircut which is very tomboyish, uh, very green kind of style, and still based on the bob. And when we say bob, it would mean that the outline below the curve is shorter or linear, and then the density above the curve, within the haircut, is heavier or longer. It doesn't have to be one length, as long as the proportion goes from shorter in the outline into denser and longer internally, we can talk about the concept of a bob. Okay, so I hope that gives you a little bit of the time uh, to tune in. Um, what I did here with the sectioning pattern is very simple. I mean, Elena has pretty much uh, a center parting naturally, so we just follow that naturally. It could have been a side parting anyway. But uh, the idea is to deal with Elena's density of the hair. And it's pretty dense, but we like that. We like that kind of, you know, strong uh, weight balance in the hair. And I, I just want to honor that. I just want to make sure that we do work with that. Uh, but we actually, first of all, we're going to technically put the proportion in, put the right length in, make sure the shape is correct. And also, later, we will work visually a little bit more with the texture of it. Because what Elena really likes, and what a lot of people like these days, is kind of a no haircut haircut. And I know this sounds funny, but I think good haircuts should have a little of a self-made feel, but executed really, really well. And this is one of the things uh, I like to be recognized for, that uh, I like to simplify things, I like to purify and minimalize everything I do, but make sure the execution of it is done very, very nicely. Okay? Um, I think we live in times where we are very overexposed with vision and noise and, and a lot of distraction. So I like to go a little bit against the, against the brain with that by just simplifying what we do and just make sure we make a really minimal statement of that. Okay? So I'm just going to turn Elena around so you can see the back. Um, I have some products here. I've been preparing the hair with my favorite leave-in repair. I like to use uh, products that are hydrating the hair. I like moisturizers, everything that makes the hair really uh, smooth and shiny. Um, so we also have our everlasting color leave-in conditioner. We have our Stay Alive. I just like to have a mix of um, conditioners and almost overloads slightly on purpose the, the hair product. 
because this is the way of how I feel we have that lived in editorial, slightly condensed feel that I'm always looking for. And, and I like the hair to be very movable, very raw, very touchable, and almost, sounds funny, but almost a little sweaty. So in that way, by overdoing the products, we get that real uh, hybrid result. Okay, I also have one can which is uh, saying a lot, but it's just topped off with water, which I like to use. Um, I like to use uh, a lot of uh, moist on the hair, so like to separate the hair really well. I'm just going to put it in a little higher. Just make it really comfortable. And then we're going to start with the baseline. For the baseline, I like to work with the fingers on the skin. Uh, if there's any people working on mannequin heads, what I'm about to do now doesn't work on mannequin head. Okay, because here the skin is a bit bouncy and it's real. On mannequin heads, you're going to have to cut it through the comb. So here I'm just working underneath my fingers. See, nice and bold, nice and clean. Getting rid of that excess length. The shape of the section goes a little bit diagonal forward because this is to make sure we keep the line square, just to compensate for the roundness uh, of the head shape. If you work the line too much uh, by honoring square the head shape, you're very likely to go a little too round with the shape. This is exactly what we're looking for in any base of a good bob. It's just establishing a really good outline, contour, perimeter, whatever you want to call it. Um, so starting from the centre back, working our way to the side, and making sure we maintain that squareness that we are looking for here. I think historically the bob is probably the most classic stylish haircut that stood the test of time of all haircuts. Um, and there's so many variations of how you can have an interpretation of a ball. It's something, you know, it never goes out of fashion, which I'm very happy about because I love cutting bobs. And I also believe that, you know, cutting it on the right person for the right reason, with the right details, it, it makes a really strong individual statement. It brings out the personality so well. I'm just getting rid of all the little fluffy hairs. So I'm having a clean base here. Okay, I'm happy with the balance.
everything. Thanks everyone for tuning in and saying hello to me. You make me feel special. Well, is that the new way of traveling now? Just being at home in your salon and have all the hellos from all over the world? It's the future, it's the right way. Thank you, Caroline. Is there any questions so far? Oh, that's very, very sweet. That's very nice. Okay, so now I'm going to section from above the occipital bone, below the crown, the next section. Okay, first of all I'm going to make sure that everything is blended with the baseline. And then I'm going to directly start working on the shape. Um, one of the most famous and also at the same time notorious haircuts is the grand way You know, the, the, the line between right and wrong um, is very, very, very tight. And the line between uh, very cool and fashionable and Karen lays very close with the grand way to go. And everyone will know what I mean by that. So first of all, I'm just going to finish the baseline. You can cut it right on the guide, or if you're working on very dense or very wavy hair, you can leave it a fraction longer to allow the hair for the bounce up. Um, making sure that we don't create too much graduation, but that's only important if you work on a one length rock. In this case here, it has no importance because we're going to start working on a, a square graduation. Um, because the philosophy of squareness is going to continue also in this pop. Okay, so now we are very happy with this part. I'm going to start graduating it at the back, but working really, really square. So the graduation is not going to be at a 45 degree angle, it's going to be flat out vertically from the hat shape. And this is a point where the shape is going to be a lot more modern and fashionable. By working with a combination of deep point cutting and keeping the shape square because that's going to create a very soft slope in the shape but also it's going to allow the hair to move in a certain way where you see something is changed in the shape but it hasn't got that definite shape as a 45 degree angle ball. Um, squareness is something in my personal taste of cutting hair that probably plays one of the most important roles in, in the things I do when it comes to shape. See, when you work square on a surface that is curved, it creates an immense kind of flow um, throughout the whole proportion. Also, see, I'm letting the comb do the tension, no tension with my fingers at all, and then making sure I can see the guidelines from start to finish. 
So then, just point cut very gently. The most important part of the point cutting is that the scissors are very steep into the hair, very parallel. So we don't create scissor marks and we create what I'd like to call um, a very splintered feel in, in the hair. Making sure as the head curves in more towards the side, they have a little bit more over direction. Just to avoid that the hair is going too short behind the ears. Why? Because if the hair goes too short behind the ears, we've got the typical slope that goes up towards the ear, and then we don't have a reference point, or we do, but it's too high, and then it slopes forward. And this is exactly the kind of um, feel that's the kind of direction I don't like to go. So now I'm going to start from the opposite side, pick up my guideline, and repeat the same technique. Okay, see the guideline from start to finish. It's, it's not a blunt guideline, but it should be very clear where to cut. Before we continue, I'm just double checking my balance, super happy about that. So now we can take our previous section as a guide, making sure we keep a consistency in that over direction. It's all about details. I mean, you see that I'm not taking huge amounts of hair away. It's about taking little corners of hair exactly at the right spot for the right reason. And this is what's going to break up that whole one lengthy feel into something that's a lot more touchable, movable, and looks really contemporary. Because, of course, the inspiration comes from the past because we can't look into the future. So people are inspired by what happened in the past and, and we see how with our own personal taste and our feeling and our vision of how we can, how we can move it on. You know, I'm super inspired by 20s, 40s, 60s and 80s when it comes to things because the 80s were the time where uh, I grew up as a teenager which means this is a huge inspiration and it always will be. Okay, you see you get a really textured bob line without any specific shape. It just creates a flow in the hair and this is the reason why squareness is the, the main focus here. Okay, so now I'm going to move into the sides. Okay, so first of all, it's a tension thing, so that's, that's well spotted. Um, through my career, there has been uh, one thing that's become really important to me, and I'm talking about a career of 30 years, which was never talked about uh, so much in, in, in the past, and this is tension. Um, one of the things I've learned in the later part of my career, that when you use tension on hair, when you cut hair, it only works against you. Because, of course, fingers are organically not even, you know, you have different kind of pressure points. And if you put too much tension on hair, specifically at these pressure points, you're actually squeezing the hair and create what we call a finger mark. So I have, first of all, no tension uh, on the hair. Once I grip the hair between my fingers, I'm just working in a very relaxed way of cutting it and that means you can just release 
Uh, you don't have to hold it exactly to the same level. You can release that, you can be comfortable, and it's just for comfort reason that you see me doing things that maybe uh, in your classical training you were not supposed to do. But I can guarantee you, I mean, you know, if, if you check the balance, you know, this is perfectly square balanced, you know. Um, so you don't have to pull out the hair, keep it really firm and pull it and then cut it. No, I pull the hair, I relax it to my comfort and then I chop it. Um, and this is the only explanation, I can, it, it's just, you know, it, it's one of these things, even with the precision haircuts, it, I feel, and it took me a long time actually, it took me decades in my job to actually realize that tensional hair is a huge uh, disadvantage against your, against the precision of your hair production. And this is one of the things that I had to figure out myself. And I figured it out once I started to work for Kevin Murphy because it was like Kevin and the team who, who had this very relaxed way of, of just manipulating and styling the hair that I started introducing in, in my cutting. And as soon as I was doing that about 10 years ago, suddenly cutting seems to come so much easier and, and make so much more sense and the result of the haircut seems to you know even look better so it's not about always technical precision it's about making something look very pleasing to the eye and, and having that relaxed way of holding the section helps me with that i hope that answers the question oh, yeah, that was absolutely brilliant. Thanks so much, Okay, so we still have an existing undercut here that we're going to slightly blend and slightly ignore at the same time. Because I, I like the imperfections of how sometimes you need to move on from a previous haircut and adjust it to the new haircut because very often we feel like the pressure of having to cut the hair everywhere and I think it's really important when you go to the consultation and the way you communicate with your client and then the thinking procedure uh, starts for yourself as the professional is that you start thinking and like okay where do I need to cut the hair for what reason and where does it not need to be cut? Because if you keep cutting the hair all the time, everywhere, at the same spot, the hair cut will never change. And it's all about proportion. So I'm a big fan for establishing proportion mainly at the area below the curve and have a lot of uh, looseness within what we call a Kevin Murphy terms, the motion area. This is where you can start being more visual, more creative, and, and you know, things like that. Because everything below the curve of the head shape, this is where the foundation is. This is like the build-up of your haircut. This is the most time-consuming part to cut. This is the part that uh, requires the most education. So this is also the part as a hairdresser to establish yourself commercially that you can actually you know, um, make yourself stronger um, within, within the field of competition. Okay, so I'm now just going to establish that, oops, that baseline on the opposite side, and then we can start working um, with the shape internally. This is exactly the situation of how I would cut hair um, in, in a summer situation. I haven't cut uh, any of hair. I didn't even, I mean, I had a quick look at it, but I'm actually cutting this on the spot exactly how I would be cutting a client um, on the floor, on the spot. Because this is how I personally 
uh, operate the best. Um, I'm pretty famous for not prepping. And um, this is how I feel that the, the procedure and the result that comes out of it is, is super real. It's, um, it's, how, you know, it's how we roll. We have a really tough job, you know. We have to be communicative, we have to make decisions, we have to navigate our clients, we have to make sure that we have the technical skills to establish it and live up to the expectations. And of course we have to be creative to make sure that, you know, it, it all makes sense and it looks really good visually. So this is a lot of uh, things that are demanded from us, from one person. And for that reason, we need to find ways that make us strong in technique and, and keeps us inspired by, you know, sharing these things exactly like we do now to make us better hairdressers. I mean, I became a way better hairdresser since 10 years ago when I joined uh, Kevin Murphy as a brand because I felt the product was amazing, but I felt like uh, a culture uh, that um, surrounded globally that just kind of so passionate about education and how to implement these amazing products into how to manipulate hair as a material. But at the end of the day, we work on a dead fiber, you know, to, to be able to control a dead fiber with a hairstyle, a product or a haircut, I think it's pretty amazing. But at the same time, don't forget that every client that steps into your salon for the first time feels very sensitive and very intimidated about undergoing that procedure. So, we are in the field dealing with all these emotions and that makes it not so easy to be able to be in charge of all of that at the same time. But it's like the only way you could possibly accept it is to actually see the result of it. Because I've seen people doing super creative things with, with like, you know, like let's say they're picking up hair and they're like, oh, you know, let's turn it around and let's turn it like this. It actually doesn't do anything uh, different in the shape. Because at the point where the hair is combed and gripped, this is where you establish the result. If I do this like this or I do this like this, Nothing's going to change. Nothing. Trust me. I, I've been doing that procedure and trying it and error it for 30 years. It, it's one of these things that have become very principle based, but it doesn't do anything. And, you know, at my, at my personal point in my career, I like things to be really comfortable and organic. And that's why we see me doing things that maybe in your training you weren't supposed to do. Um, and that's normal because people need to have a good foundation in their classics and in their basics. But once you be behind that point, it, it's funny. I was actually talking with Nathan about that at one point. That you know, first you, you learn the rules, then you learn how to break the rules, then you think out of the box. And the last stage of your career is like when you throw everything out of the window, basically, and just do the things that you know look really good and make you really happy. And, and, look very pleasing to the eye, so, you know, it's quite a scary thing, but you can only do the very visual stuff if you have undergone the whole technical procedure of getting to that point. Um, so I hope this answered the question.
Yeah, it's not it's not my intention to mess with your heads, guys. <laughs> it's just I like to break the game and learn the rules. And the only thing I can prove that it, it, it works this way is by you know come up with, with, with good results. Because otherwise the credibility will not be valuable. Okay, it turned me now. Again, I'm working with that squareness. See how it could possibly refer to a graduated ball, but it's actually not a graduated ball at all. It's probably a graduated ball that you see in an underground or subculture magazine like, you know, ID magazine is the biggest example, where you might think, God, this hair looks good. It's like a cool haircut, but it's no haircut at all. How is this done? You know, this is what I've been focusing on in the last 10 years of my career, doing like the kind of no haircut haircuts and make them look really, really good and find a system of how we can do that, not visually, because a lot of haircuts on, on, in the fashion industry, they are done visually and done really well visually, but this is not how we be able to roll in the salon. So we need to find a technical part of how we can implement these uh, strongly street culture inspired styles, those fashion runway inspired styles, and make them work for the commercial environment. And this is something I'm personally really, really fashion, uh, passionate about. Also, by working with such a deep point cutting, I'm actually, you know, creating so much texture, but I'm not scraping the surface of the hair. I'm not damaging the cuticle. And that means um, it's not going to work against me when it comes to the health of the hair, but also when you slice into the hair and you scrape the hair, even with really sharp scissors on really wet hair, the damage of the cuticle could possibly create a little bit of a, a puffiness on the hair, which in the, at the same time, you release weight, but you create puffiness. And for that reason, I'm a big fan of cutting into the hair rather than too much slicing. See, once I go square, I can elevate it up to my comfort and nothing will change. The shape will still be square. It's just a way of holding the hair very comfortably. But yeah, trust me, I didn't do that when I was coming here for two years. You know, it's something that along the way somehow it happened and it started making sense and it made me more comfortable as a hair color. You don't have to do that. It's not like necessarily a part of the education, but for me it helps in being comfortable. Now I'm just going to establish the whole shape by doing the same technique on the opposite side. Making sure I can see the guideline from start to finish because this is the only education, not education, indication we have that we have a consistency um, in the balance. Consistency is a word that you can hear me using a lot because it's all about consistency. In your moods, in your, in your work, in everything. It's better to be average and to be consistent in that, to have peaks of excellence and, and, and low performance. That just doesn't work because clients are gonna notice that difference 
in your work, in your mood, whatever it is. So whatever your highest personal level is of what you can produce, just be consistent with it. So the, the small teeth of our Kevin Murphy cutting comb are the perfect tension that you need to have the hair take it into the right direction and then just, just grab it with the fingers. You don't have to squeeze the fingers onto the hair. It doesn't help you with anything. So the comb is doing the job and whenever it's right, I'm just holding my fingers and just resting my fingers, using one blade to chop off the hair. And it gives you so much control um, of exactly where to chop the hair off. Once you have a really good system of cutting hair, it's just finding your own personal way of how you get inspired. Because once the system is into place, all you need to do is inspire yourself. So you don't get into the routine, you don't get bored, you know. And the inspiration is so different for anyone, you know. I need to see hair to do hair. I love architecture, I love photography. Yeah, sometimes photography inspires me if there is hair on the picture. But I, I, I can't look at a building and say, oh, I'm going to do like a haircut, you know. I need to see, actually I need to see really bad hair. Like, I need to see hair from the outskirts of the city, where it's all a bit rough, and it's kind of really self-made. It's, it's, it's really badly done, but it actually has a real attitude to it. And I take that as an idea, I take that as an inspiration, and then I go to the jamming cutting floor in my studio and try to take the idea and, and perform it into the right place. And this is for me the, the, you know, the best, the biggest inspiration. Um, so yeah, I'll be happy to be traveling again because the traveling helps to be exposed to different cultures and, and you know, their behavior and how street culture is exposed within that culture because for me it's absolutely a necessity to have that in my work. I mean, I, subcultures are a big part of my, my private influence, you know, I like musical influences and stuff like that, where fashion is not really the main key ingredient of the, the cultures I live in, privately. So having that really offbeat form of inspiration uh, really helps me to put it into the right perspective and come up with something that might be a little bit quirky, but if you place it in the right exposure for the right reason um, I always feel we're getting somewhere different, somewhere new, something that relates to the people and that I, I feel is the most important thing. Okay, so now the, the shape is into place, I think um, now I want to work a little bit more in the front. Uh, we're not going to work on the real fringe. Um, Elena likes this kind of undone feel and how the hair kind of moves away uh, from the face shape, kind of opens it a little bit, but again, so it doesn't really look freshly cut. It looks super 
raw super living um, there's a lot of like very upcoming American and British bands who have this kind of hair it's not gender related at all I mean having haircuts with, with uh, no gender is a big thing right now uh, of course together with diversity but I when I look at, at my personal portfolio of 15 years back, I don't believe that any of my efforts ever had a gender. So now I do it consciously, but I think in the past I've always been doing it subconsciously that, you know, a haircut is just a haircut. And it can be short, mid-length, or long. So um, now I'm going to just change to the Kevin Murphy curved scissors. And uh, they're going to help me to put a little bit of natural band into the hair. Particularly here at the front part. See, the comb is doing the band and the fingers are just gripping it. As soon as you put the fingers to turn around, the band will not work. And it's something that really needs to be taught and learned because it's not something you naturally do. Cutting with banding the hair is I think it's something that started to happen in the 70s when layering was very important. Um, I saw my mother doing it back in the salon when I grew up as a teenager in the 80s. You know, I, was like, I was thinking back then, what is this whole banding thing? But it does create a certain direction um, in the hair together with the bend of the scissors. that helps us to add movement to the hair. You see how the hair starts to break up and bend at the same time? This is exactly what we're looking for. You know, back in the day, I started to play around with elevation, low or high, once the hair was gripped between the fingers and bending the hair. And it's probably at that time I discovered when I wanted to do creatively something different by just gripping the hair and then bringing it to another level, that I actually notice it doesn't change anything. You have to really uh, distribute or project or whatever you wanna wanna call it the hair differently from the head shape to have different results. Um, but these are the things, you know, as, as a haircut, I mean, you just try that. And, I mean, I'm, I'm super grateful that every time you guys invest in, in your time and have, like, sleep deprivation just by watching me. But, um, you know, as, as an educator, as, you know, running an academy, it, it's for me, I had to try a lot of things before they become successful, you know, it's the things that don't work, they just end in the trash can and then you're just left over with the successful kind of things and then people say, oh, whatever he does, he does it really well, but, you know, trust me, it's been <laughs> try and error for many times sometimes till we get to something that works or becomes successful.
Stephanie, you're a trooper. I promise you, um, somehow, um, one day I'll make it up for you for your sleep deprivation. And, and I'm, I'm very, very honored and very grateful uh, for the beautiful comment. And uh, I would say if you don't have something better to do than not sleep and watch the demonstration, but honestly, um, that's amazing. I'm super grateful. Okay, I think uh, we are good for now. I'm just going to gently dry hair. Um, I'm just going to top it up with a bit of leave-in repair. I probably could put this under a hair monster or a climazon in the cellar situation. Let it dry really natural and then just detail it a little bit and then blast it with cold air. Done deal. This is not going to work for now so I'm just going to try to dry it gently. Um, but this is already, you see that you can't really put a haircut to this. It's like, it's just a shape that works. And this is what uh, in the time frame of now, what I like the most, it, it got a, a, an indication of length somehow and of shape, but it's it's nothing very drastic or specific. And it sounds funny, but it's really hard to do. It's really hard to do in any kind of design. You know, if you look at it from a photographer's point of view or from a graphic designer's point of view, uh, to do like anti anti design is very hard to do or to do like makeup, like there is almost no makeup visual, it's really hard to do for a makeup artist. So for us to do a cool haircut that doesn't look like a real haircut, it's pretty hard to do.
It's always really important to know when to stop. I mean, this would be dry perfectly a little bit more under the climber zone or the hair roster. But it's come to the point where I'm really happy with it. So let's not overdo this and overthink this. Um, Elena, can you just stand up for me? Okay, so what we have here is the base of the ball. You know, you have the squareness and the very solid feel of what refers to a ball, which uh, brings out the shape, a lot of weight. And then the way we're building up is by working really square. So because of the head shape, you can see a slight slope there, but because of the squareness, it's not your traditional um, old school graduated ball. The freshness of the whole haircut is the squareness, no doubt about that. So we work square to the back, square to the front, over direction where the hand is curving to make sure you're not rounding with the head shape. 
Um, combining that with, with a deep point cutting and uh, making sure, see that you leave space for these tiny little imperfections and that of course uh, is, is the deep point cutting you know, all the way through.